Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to the Winter Star News Cafe. I'm Don MacArthur uh, here with Dylan Christie and our special uh, guest, uh, Fred Francis's older brother. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, Eddie Francis, of course, uh, Windsor Mayor. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's good to be here. This is what happens when you're lame duck. Right? You're referred to as somebody else's older brother now. Yeah. Well, let's get this out of the way right now because we've, we've been making a lot of sport uh, of your brother and yourself with this picture uh, taken uh, by Windstar Nick B, uh, Nick Brancaccio. Uh -huh. What are you doing in this photo? Are you going out to feed the meter? Like, how did you get caught in the background there? <laughs> I was making sure the meters were fed. Uh, no, I came down because it was his first news conference. So I wanted to see how he handled it. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to come down and observe and hear how he uh, handled it. And, you know, it's, uh, as an older brother, I'm somewhat nervous for the kid. And uh, looking at the media, looking at the tough questions that were thrown his way, I want to know how he handled it. He did fine. That's good. Making sure that Doug Schmidt uh, treated him well isn't too cruel. But Doug Schmidt's always cruel. That's a different story, though. <laughs> But I mean, you know, it, it, I, I sort of said, uh, you know, off camera that if, if people knew the sort of background, you know, because you have a reputation being a bit of a micromanager and really kind of a control freak for, for, for good or for bad, um, you know, your younger brother that you just you, that you just can't let go, that this thing could win like a, a national newspaper award. I mean, it really, it really, really <laughs> sort of um, tells the story. But are you involved in your brother's campaign or have you just given some advice and I've got a city to run? Well, I've given him advice. Uh, Fred, uh, Fred, to, for people that know Fred, He's running my last two campaigns. Uh, Fred is, uh, this is something that he's always wanted to do. Uh, he's got a master's and he's studied political science. He's always been involved in politics. He's always been involved in uh, uh, municipal elections. But he's never been able to do it because I've been there. And uh, obviously, uh, in the past, it, would, it wouldn't be appropriate if I was mayor and he was a city councilor for him to even consider running. So with me deciding not to run, gave him the opportunity to finally do something that he wanted to, he's always wanted to do and wanted to try and uh, gives them an opportunity to put his name out there. So he's running his campaign. A ward campaign is very different from a mayoral campaign. A ward campaign, you know, it's, uh, it's about door knocking. It's about getting out there. So he's, he's doing it on his own. Uh, from time to time, he'll call me for advice. Doesn't mean he'll take my advice, but uh, uh, he's, uh, he's enjoying it, and it's, it's for him. But uh, that shot there is uh, me attending a news conference like anybody else would attend, uh, making sure that uh, things are going well. And, uh, you know, that's what big brothers do. Excellent. Well, we promised him now that he's come on the show, we'll no longer refer to him as uh, Eddie's younger brother. So. Yeah, but now you're going to refer to me as Fred's brother. Well, that's right? it. It's only fair. <laughs> well, he was on the show yesterday, so now yeah. you're following in his uh, political In his shadow. Yeah. There you go. I'm in the shadow. So did you see Graston uh, this morning? I did. Eddie? Okay, we're going to cue that up for you. He's uh, this whole Strasser, uh, Dilkins thing. Yeah. Um, What's your relationship uh, with John Strasser? Is it a campaign issue? Should he be coming out and endorsing Milson? Well, that's uh, that's for John Strasser to answer. And uh, I heard this morning uh, comments uh, from the uh, Board of Governors saying the Board of Governors in St. Clair College is not endorsing any particular candidate or staying neutral. So uh, there, there seems to be a, a very uh, separate approach uh, uh, taken uh, by the Board of Governors and, and, and by Dr. Strasser. Uh, I would, you know, that's, that's for something for Dr. Strasser to answer. Most people probably don't remember, but uh, Drew Dilkins used to be uh, an employee of the college uh, for a couple of years. And then when he decided to run for city council, he focused on running for city council. So uh, with respect to uh, why Dr. Strasser's taking the position that he is, uh, I'll leave it to the media to ask him the question. Uh, you know, just before John even, uh, John Nelson announced, uh, Strasser was uh, basically uh, pushing uh, for Nelson to run. And with regards to my relationship with uh, Dr. Strasser, I guess the city hasn't done enough for the college. Uh, the fact that we uh, did the deal for the St. Clair Center for the Arts, uh, the fact that we provided the building for the Mediaplex, the fact that we provided uh, money and uh, the opportunity for Schlegel Villages to uh, open up on, on campus, the fact that we provided for the woodlot and everything else that we've uh, worked together, uh, I guess that's not been enough. Uh, uh, we've always pride, uh, put a lot of pride in, on our relationship with our academic students. I'm grateful to the college and to the university for the, what they've been able to accomplish, uh, especially in our downtown core. Uh, but unfortunately, I think the relationship, not from my perspective, but from Dr. Strasser's perspective, uh, was, uh, uh, took a different turn uh, when uh, the university was able to get uh, some money uh, to be part of uh, the downtown development. Uh, and I think he holds that against us. He still wants $10 million, uh, which is unfortunate because uh, the college had the opportunity. Uh, I remind everyone, because some people seem to forget about the history, but I'll remind everyone that the college was there uh, when, at the table when the University of the Province and the city uh, made the deal to bring the university downtown. The college had an opportunity. For whatever reason, it didn't, it didn't work out. Uh, but those are questions to ask of Dr. Strasser. He's the one that's coming out pushing Nelson. I think the question, the legitimate question would be, what are you basing your endorsement on? When I do come out and endorse, uh, I would expect people to ask me, what are you basing your endorsement on? Uh, what, what, what levels of uh, analysis? Uh, what merits, uh, what experience, what are the things that you've factored into your endorsement? Uh, 
uh, I've not heard that from uh, from Dr. Strasser. Uh, so, but I'll leave that for you guys to to do. And we have invited them uh, to come on the show. Uh, the invitation is still open. Yeah, for sure. Well, it kind of raises an interesting point too, though, um, that not many candidates have gone and reached out to Strasser as the biggest employer in the ward. Uh, I guess even if you were a mayoral candidate, would you not want to sit down with the largest employer in your city? Uh, wouldn't there be benefits to reaching out, seeing what you can do to help them, uh, open up that source of communication? I think it's a two-way street. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, it's an opportunity for uh, the college to reach out to the candidates as well and say to the candidates, hey, listen, we're your largest employer. We'd like to sit down with you. We'd like to inform you of what it is that we do at the college and how mm -hmm. we do it. Uh, with regards to what I've heard uh, publicly said uh, by Dr. Strasser, that uh, Dilkins hasn't reached out to me. Uh, you know what? Uh, I think that's kind of a red, uh, red herring. And I say that because the city council has been very active with the college on many files. I think the city councillors and myself and city administration are very familiar with what the college does and how significant they are uh, to, uh, to the city and to the ward. Uh, so I think it's, it's a question of, uh, it's a two-way street. But I think it's more than that. I don't think you base an endorsement based on whether or not somebody picked up the phone and called you. Yeah. Uh, if you're really serious on endorsing someone, you endorse them not based on relationship, you endorse them not based on personality, you endorse them based on merit and substance. And to endorse someone based on merit and substance means that you've got to dig deep and understand what that person is offering, whether it's at the school board level, city council level, or mayoral level. And then when you come out to endorse that particular individual, it's more than, well, they picked up the phone and called me. You don't want a council, you don't want a school board, you don't want a mayor that's uh, being endorsed and elected based on the fact that they know how to operate a phone. And that's not how to run a city. Uh, most people know how to work a phone. Yep, okay. that's uh, So endorsements, uh, you've, you've been very clear that you are going to come out in favor of some candidates, and I guess they've been beating a path uh, to your door already. Mm -hmm. You haven't endorsed anybody yet, yep. officially. Is that coming? When can we expect it? Will you endorse them here first? I, uh, when I announced in January, I made it very clear that I saw that I was going to play a role in the election in terms of offering endorsements. Uh, when I'm suggesting that I'm going to offer endorsement, that's not to tell people or suggest to people that you've got to go vote for this person. But oftentimes we've seen elections where uh, certain people uh, would uh, not uh, would run a campaign and the constituents may not be as informed as they should be as to the history of that individual or what that individual can or cannot bring to the table. So my endorsement is intended to be uh, another piece of the, of the puzzle, if you will, uh, a piece of information that constituents can use uh, to decide for themselves based on all the other information uh, as to whether or not and who they're going to vote for. Uh, so this, the role that I'm, I see myself playing for those candidates that want to uh, is I'm researching the candidates, I'm asking questions uh, based on my experience around the council table, uh, and I'm going to uh, basically suggest and offer support for particular candidates that I think, and again, I'm not going to base it on the telephone call, but I'm going to come out and say, based Send on experience, based <laughs> on the skill set, based on uh, what their platform says and you know how detailed they are, uh, this is why I think they'll make a good counsel. But that's my opinion, only my opinion. And then the constituents, I would hope, would take that, would take the platforms, would take the debates, would take the face-to-face the -face interaction, mm -hmm. and then put that and assemble that together and make an informed decision at the ballot box. And I say that because this is a very critical election. And there's, you know, we've come a long way in the past 11 years, and uh, the constituency needs to be uh, very informed. And I'm more concerned about what's going to happen at the council level. The mayoral, uh, you know, the mayoral campaigns get the attention. They get uh, the focus. Uh, they're covered by the media. So the, constituencies, the constituents are able, and the constituency is able to at least garner the information they need from these multiple sources. At the council level, when you have so many councillors running for a particular ward, with so many different ideas and so many different names without the same opportunities that, provide, that are provided to mayoral candidates, it provides a challenge for the constituency to really, you know, sift through that and figure out what's what and who's who. So hopefully that will be of help. Well, no matter what, uh, your endorsement will carry a lot of weight. Uh, there was a report, or I guess uh, election primer, uh, that came out yesterday. We, you're in today's mm -hmm. paper uh, quoted in that. Uh, they say that really you're going to be a dominant force in Windsor politics. Um, he was a dominant force. <clears throat> But even uh, still, I'm lame duck now. Okay, he's lame duck. Well, that's <laughs> true too. But yeah, yeah. But anyway, so going forward, they're saying there's two main issues um, that still are forefront in Windsor politics. Uh, there's the contracting out of city services and the city's approach to property taxes and spending. Now, is there any concern about um, whoever precedes you or comes after um, 
kind of undoing some of the stuff that you worked so hard with I, I in think the last few years? I read, I, read the, I got the report and read the report for the first time uh, yesterday afternoon, and then I got a call from uh, Chris Thompson from the Winter Star. Mm -hmm. And my read of the report very quickly was that uh, exactly what you said. Uh, listen, for the past 11 years, we've been operating and running a city based on core principles, mm -hmm. uh, holding the line, reducing debt, increasing reserves, investing in infrastructure. And as a result of that, we've had to make some very difficult decisions. Uh, and some of those decisions have been, you know, uh, attacked, and some have been uh, popular, some haven't been popular. Uh, that's fine. Uh, at the end of the day, when you get elected, you're making the decisions for the city overall and for the health of the city. Uh, today, we're in a better position. Mm -hmm. You know, when we first elected in 2011, our tax rate was the highest per capita in the province of Ontario. Today, we're below average. We had the highest debt per capita. Today, uh, we're, we've reduced debt significantly. The reserves were non-existent. Today, we have reserves and infrastructure. So to make the decisions that we've made have set us on a particular course. Mm -hmm. This is the first opportunity, uh, obviously, with me not running, uh, for candidates to come forward, especially at the, at the mayoral level, that provide the, the type of opening, if you will, uh, for a candidate to get elected that takes the city back. And when I read the report, that's exactly what I read. Yeah. Uh, and when you have an incumbent councillor running, like Dilkins, he becomes the one that is the, because he was part of the council, he becomes the torchbearer for those decisions. Uh, and like Don and I were talking, he wears it. So it's either you agree with what's happened over the past 11 years and you want that same direction to continue, mm -hmm. and Dilkins, by virtue of being the incumbent, wears it and carries that torch, or you want to go a different direction. And then if you want to go a different direction, then you're going to choose uh, one of the other two candidates. So that's how I read the report, and the election is very important. I don't think that we can afford to go back. Uh, that's my own personal opinion on it. I think we've come a long way. We've turned the city around. We've repositioned, repositioned the city uh, post-economic recession. And now we're at a point in time where we're building on our community. Uh, you know, we're building new libraries. We're building new fire halls, uh, new bike paths, uh, while at the same time investing in the infrastructure that is critical uh, to roads and sewers and fixing our infrastructure and holding the line on taxes. There's nothing wrong with holding the line on taxes. And all of a sudden, there's something wrong. But uh, let me tell you something. Holding the line on taxes means you're running the business with a fixed pot of money. And we've been running the business with the same fixed pot of money every single year. Uh, what's wrong with that? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, um, anyway, so, so this report is by John Sutcliffe at the University of Windsor. Uh, Chris Thompson uh, wrote about it. Uh, so, uh, listen, are you going to come back, Eddie? Maybe next week. Uh, oh, thank God for clarifying. I thought he said if I'm coming come back in politics. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do that. But I'll come back anytime. Okay, uh, listen, uh, fantastic. Because we, we, we want to hear about I your think, endorsements. We want to see how the campaign's going because it's really starting to pick up some listen, steam now. Uh, and I'm not I'm not kissing ass because I'm here. Uh, I guess I can say that on, on your show, but you can. of course uh, we'll beep it. We have a seven seconds. This, this, this is very this is very good that you guys are doing. Uh, the more the more opportunities that we're providing to get as much information out there allows the constituency to be as informed as they can be. And I think that's what this election is about. Let's cut through all of the fluff, let's cut through all the rhetoric, and let's get the facts on the table, give it to the constituents, and let them make the right decision. Okay, uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, Fred Francis's older brother. Uh, we're at the Windsor Star News Cafe.